guys, I just wanted to take a moment to uh, talk about this black powder glaze. Um, it's a Sherwin-Williams based product and I think there's a lot of other uh, chemical coated companies uh, or wood finish companies that make this as well. Um, but it's kind of a neat, uh, a neat substance. It's uh, a liquid in form, but um, if you apply it onto a surface, and here I actually um, just brush it on raw wood, you can actually just rub it right off. And uh, the benefit to that is, is that you don't have as much, um, I don't really know if it's a benefit, it, it actually has its uh, applications that fit better than a standard liquid uh, greasy wiping stain. And I'm actually doing a sample color right now for a buddy of mine um, who's making a kitchen for a friend of his, and it's on cherry, and um, he's picked out kind of a kind of a deep uh, brown color to match a wood floor, but he wants to glaze it, so I'm hoping that we can use this black powder glaze. But I just brushed some onion on a raw piece of wood, which they don't recommend it at all, but I just wanted to do it just for demonstration purposes, just to show you that it literally just rubs right off. Um, the kind of the, the partial advantage to that is is when you're doing a lot of glazing with like a, a lot of crevices and profiles and stuff like that, it uh, hangs up in the corners better. You don't have as much of a chance of wiping it out. But I actually have this uh, drawer front here um, that I made up and it's been sealed and it's uh, dry so I'm going to scuff this and then uh, I'm going to put on that black powder glaze and then I'll show you as far as how it works. Um, it is typically recommended to spray it on but it does work brushing as well because essentially you know you're going to put the coating on by uh, brush or spray and it dries pretty quick. Um, literally in like probably not even a minute, probably like a half a minute. And um, then you just basically rub off what you don't want. So it, it's kind of a, a neat product. So uh, the disadvantage to this is, and I don't know if, if all the powder glazes are this way, but I hadn't used it for a while, and it was like tar on the bottom. Um, and I've noticed that like now tomorrow, for example, I'll let this sit overnight. Uh, tomorrow it'll be like um, ta uh, taffy on the bottom again. So. Uh, that's the only disadvantage I've ever seen uh, with this particular glaze. The other glaze they use with Sherwood Williams, um, even the stock and the custom, don't settle anything like this. So I have a feeling it's got a lot to do with the solvents that are in it, uh, being it's, uh, like I said, it's a fast drying glaze that turns into a powder. So I'm going to uh, scuff that drawer front up and then um, I'm going to show you how to put on that glaze and we'll see what it looks like when it's all said and done. So we'll uh, start the finishing process with the glaze. Okay, this sealer is dried for um, probably about 25 minutes or so, and uh, it's a fast dry vinyl sealer is what I use. So I'm going to use one of these sanding sponges. Um, it's called a Rhino Soft. It's uh, made by a company called Indasa, and I get these through a company on the internet called Abrasives.com. And I'm really starting to like these. Uh, they're a lot cheaper than the 3M or the Merca, and uh, they're similar but they're different. Um, this actually has an actual um, heavyweight paper glued onto a sponge versus the Indasa and 3M and some of the other manufacturers. It's actually a sponge where they actually have spread and glue uh, the abrasive onto one side of it. So these are quite a bit cheaper um, and they last just as long and I feel they actually last a little bit longer. Um, but then again, it's all personal preference. I'm not here to tell you that this is the way it has to be done. This is the way that I've been doing it and I've had very good luck with it. So somebody else might have a different way of doing it. The idea is that we all have a different way of doing the same thing. So anyways, enough chatter. up just like that. Now I'm just going to kind of go into the corners here a little bit. It's basically to put a little scratch pattern in there for adhesion purposes. And I'll do the edges.
Okay, so this has been seal sanded now. It's nice and smooth. I'm going to do one added precaution that I've done in the past with glazes. Um, anytime I glaze something, which is probably maybe two times a year, um, I've learned that using a, uh, a synthetic um, pad like this here, it's a synthetic steel wool basically, and uh, this is another product from Indasa, um, Rhino Soft, and I think it's just the, uh, I think they just call it a synthetic pad. Um, I like to use this because it's got a little bit different scratch pattern. It works pretty well for uh, evening out any sanding scratches from your sandpaper or from your sanding sponge. Uh, now with the glaze, the, 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 um, one of the things that can happen with glazing is when you're using a uh, sanding abrasive or sanding media like this, you have a tendency of leaving uh, real fine straight scratches or it might be cross straight scratches depending on how you're sanding. This synthetic uh, sanding pad or synthetic steel wool um, does a really nice job of buffing those out and making a very nice and uniform sanding pattern. The disadvantage to it is that these alone typically aren't very great, uh, aggressive enough to knock any debris that you might have in the seal coat. So um, I know the company I work for, we just use actually use the, just the sanding pad and we don't actually use a synthetic pad after that. But uh, I've had some experience here in the past where uh, if I use something like this and I glaze over it, it definitely shows all the sanding scratches from your seal sanding. So uh, I did this as a kind of a precautionary and it's worked ever since. So i uh, never really tried again without of it. I don't know if I did something wrong, but I just kind of looked at this as an added insurance policy. So I'm just basically lightly rubbing over what I've already sanded. And then just like that. So now I have a a, uh, a drawer front that is ready for glazing. So I'm going to set this over up in the spray area just because it displays kind of makes a little bit of a mess. I'll just put a little glaze in a cup and I'll take a brush and I'll, I'll show you how I apply it. Uh, how I'm going to apply it for this. Okay, we're just going to put a little bit on the brush here. And I'm just going to work my way around the outside edge. I'm just going to work it in all the profiles. You can see how quick this is actually starting to set up. actually see here now as far as how this is just flashing off pretty rapidly. Let me move this so I don't tip it over. I did get a little sloppy with it but as you can see right here I mean just basically it's just turning dull when it's dull it's dry. The beauty about this uh, powder glaze is, is if you were to set it up in a spray gun and you only wanted to highlight, say, uh, moldings, for example, on a, a piece of furniture or something, um, you can basically spray it just over the molding with a real narrow pattern and just highlight the molding and you'll actually kind of uh, create a halo around the molding and um, kind of give you a kind of like a shaded effect. A little bit of spot there where it's still not quite dry yet, and like I said, it's just a little heavier there, but basically the rest of the drawer front is dry. 
not sure what happens if it's you wipe it when it's wet yet so I'm just going to leave it because I, I want to keep this for good representation for a stain sample. You can see here how it's uh, already dry. See I can just touch it and just wipe it like that. But. And here's the nice thing is, is you know, like I said, as it turns into a powder, you can take a compressed air hose and it doesn't affect it. Okay, so basically here it is. I'm just going to basically take my rag, I'm just going to wipe off what I don't want. One thing that I do remember reading about this is that um, depending on the application you might actually have to come back and take a synthetic uh, pad and actually rub off the rest just because of the way it kind of uh, sets up on the surface and I was hoping I wouldn't have to do that but I'm going to have to do it anyways. So I'm just going to take uh, little pad here and just rub off what I don't want and you can see here how it just cleans up almost as if you were wiping it well you kind of are but you're wiping with the synthetic pad you can also supposedly and I have never tried this before um, you can supposedly uh, do your finished sanding after you have uh, glazed it with the uh, uh, synthetic sponge here, but I've uh, never done that and I don't have any experience in that, so I'm just going to scuff sand it, powder glaze it, wipe it off, and then uh, clean it up with the Scotch Brite. As you can see here, it just literally just turns into a powder. And that's why they call it a powder glaze. I know of a few manufacturers that make it. Um, Valspar does make some in their Zenith series, but it's typically what they call a water powder glaze, uh, meaning that it's mostly water, so it dries a little bit slower, but there's no uh, flammable liquids to worry about, or flammable solvents or vapors. So. So here we have it. Basically, I have rubbed this, rubbed the glaze off with the uh, rag at the beginning and then the uh, synthetic steel pad. And uh, kind of the beauty of it is it's got a little bit of a different appearance. Now, remember how I said that, you know, when it was dry on the surface, you couldn't take a compressed air nozzle to blow it off? Not so much now. You can still blow off the loose stuff, but it seems to be that once it's actually adhered to the surface, even though it's a powder, uh, it won't blow off. So there we have it. That is a uh, powder glaze. I'll just do a little cleanup here. Um, like I said, it's just it's a little bit different to work with because um, you know it's just a, it's a different characteristic. But the beauty of it is, is uh, an application like this here, it holds up very well into the uh, profiles. So I'm just gonna rub off the outside here. Some pretty funky stuff.
And now the beauty of this as well is this is ready for the next clear coat. Um, with a traditional solvent base or even a uh, water base uh, glaze, uh, a liquid glaze, um, you have to make sure it's fully dry before you put the next coat of clear over it. Because what will happen is where you got any heavy, heavy glazing like in these profiles, if it's still wet when you put your uh, clear over it, uh, especially if it's a conversion varnish, what will happen is, is that uh, the oils, the slower oils in that solvent borne glaze will migrate to the surface creating a real soft film. I've actually seen it happen, it's not good. Um, if you're using a lacquer of some sort, um, typically the lacquer coats melt into the next coat so you've got one coat versus a conversion varnish for example or an acid cured conversion varnish typically it's a layer upon layer and there you rec uh, rely on mechanical bond versus a uh, chemical bond so all right uh, I'm gonna spray on a, a coat of um, high build uh, pre-cat uh, finish on here and um, that'll be it they'll show you when this is all said and done what it looks like So, here we have it, the uh, first piece of a uh, wood that has been glazed, that was good, <laughs> glazed with a um, powder glaze, so we'll let this dry and I will show you what the finished product looks like. Um, the one thing I will point out though is that typically whenever I glaze something, I always use a low gloss finish, something typically between a 15 and 20 degree sheen. Uh, turns out to be that um, this uh, friend of a friend actually, who's this for, um, he'd actually picked out a semi-gloss, uh, kind of to match the wood floor. But the wood floor isn't glazed, um, but his wife wanted that glaze hang up. So um, that's what they purchased, but that doesn't mean they're gonna use that yet. Um, I personally like to use a low gloss finish over a glaze because typically the glaze is representing an antique finish. So we'll just let this dry and I'll come back in 15-20 uh, minutes and we'll show you the uh, finished project. Finished product. Okay, so here it is, about uh, 25 to 30 minutes have gone by, and uh, I've got a pizza roof here that's uh, already finished, and it's nice and smooth, and um, you can kind of see here uh, a little bit of the hang up. It's not a big difference, but one thing I did notice is, is it did uh, shade the tone uh, like a glaze should, but it seems to be it's more uniform, so. It's not a, uh, it doesn't show up on camera real well, but it's not a huge difference as far as, um, you know, the, uh, the color tone, but it seems to be it's a little bit more uniform. Uh, before, the profiles uh, were a little bit lighter than the surface and the end grain, obviously, and I tried really hard not to polish these uh, just to get them smooth, and I just recently changed the, um, the tips on this cutter for running this raised panel, and, um, it still uh, has a tendency of uh, polishing the profile a little bit, so I tried to open it up a little bit with the orbital, and um, it was fairly decent, but it was still significantly lighter than this. Uh, this here has definitely um, helped kind of blend and tie things together, so. Now it'll be up to uh, my buddy's friend uh, to see if uh, he actually likes this or not. and. Um, as I was saying before, I typically don't like uh, to use a, uh, uh, a satin uh, finish on this drawer front or on, the, on a glaze 
But this actually doesn't look too bad. Now this is a little bit shinier than, than the surface here, but then again, that all goes about how this profile is prepared. Um, this will die down overnight even further, but uh, this is kind of what I was hoping more so for. And the one thing I've noticed right off the bat as well, that that glaze almost acts a little bit like a filler too, because this is just really, I mean, this is smooth as a baby's bottom. Um, you know, typically this finish always is smooth, and obviously it's all in the preparation as far as you know making sure that you got all the debris off. But I mean, it's just it's got what they call, um, or what I've known to call, it's got the hand. It's just really silky smooth, so uh, almost like you laid a wash coat down, which I didn't do at all. So, anyways, um, that is a powder glaze. So um, I'll be doing more videos on powder glaze. I got a. Um, a cabinet, a small cabinet, a display cabinet I made uh, to display a uh, autographed Stanley wooden handle hammer. I, I um, was autographed by Norm Abrams, so I'm still working on a stain color for that, and uh, that one for surely will be using this glaze as well. So I'll do that a little bit more of a scaled up version, and that'll be a spray application as well. So there we have it. Hey guys, I just wanted to quick show you this. Um, I did this uh, sample on the side here as well, just to kind of show the uh, color difference with and without glaze. Um, my sister-in-law had stopped by here uh, here a little bit ago, and she actually had liked that color, that drawer front, and she wanted to see what it looked like on hard maple. So I just took a scrap piece of hard maple, uh, sanded it up really good, um, starting out with 120 grit, and then finished sanding with 150. And then I just applied this wipe stain over the maple, which typically I wouldn't normally do um, because typically maple is so dense, it doesn't take stain very uniformly. Um, so I, I, like I said, she just wanted to kind of see what it looked like. Um, if I was normally do this, I would typically do like a dye stain or a wash coat at least uh, to kind of give a nice uniform surface for the stain to bite in more evenly. Um, anyways, so basically what this shows is the same stain color with and without glaze on maple. And uh, this wouldn't even matter if it was cherry, uh, you'd still see this uh, color difference. So basically this entire board was stained with this color. I let it dry, I put a coat of the uh, Fast Dry Catalyzed Vinyl Sealer over that, let that dry, I scuff sanded it with the uh, 320 uh, sanding sponge. And then um, I had uh, taped half of it off with a piece of blue uh, uh, painter's tape. And then um, I just took a scotch bright again and just lightly rubbed the one half I wanted to glaze. Took the glaze and brushed it on, let it dry a little bit, and then just took a scotch bright and rubbed it off again. And uh, here is the difference that you can clearly see that uh, this one. Uh, it doesn't look real well on the camera, but this one in, in real life or real time actually looks kind of like a kind of like a caramely color, and then down here below it's a little bit uh, more of a, a yellowish brown versus a reddish brown. So that black glaze has a tendency of killing some of the red and uh, bringing out more of the yellow. So um, here's a kind of another uh, example of it. So. And then I just uh, put a coat of the uh, high build uh, pre-cat uh, lacquer finish over the top of it and uh, this is what it is. So here you can see a little bit more representation of the true sheen of that finish which like I said typically on a glaze I like to use something that's about a 15 to 20 degree sheen and this here I think is a 30 to 35 so um, it's, it's definitely uh, a lot more but um, sounded like uh, she kind of liked this color so she's gonna let me know tomorrow she's gonna stop by and pick it up and dwell on it a little bit and um, let me know from there so anyways just wanted to share that with you that uh, this is the the color difference with and without glaze so thanks for watching